That's our discussion segment as Nigeria grapples, grapples with fears of increased inflation as a result of rising cost of living. Uh, business Express takes a look at the implications for the economy and the role of banking sector in stemming the tide. Joining us as we explore the state of play and the way forward, uh, a, professor, a professor of banking, Pius Deji Olariwaju. He is also the President Chartered Institute of Bankers of Nigeria and also joining us later. In the program is Babatunde Oladipo, a chartered accountant and also a chartered banker. He will be sharing insights on the way to go. You're welcome to Business Express. Welcome to the board of you. Thank you. Uh, it's good to be on this program at this point in time. Okay. Beautiful. Well, yeah. the, the recent hike in uh, PMS uh, prices, hike in transportation and the cost of uh, food items in the market uh, has sparked concerns about inflation. Uh, how do you think this will impact Nigeria's economic growth and what measures can be taken to mitigate the effects? The, Professor? The truth of the matter is that uh, we are in a very, very challenging time. Mm. Challenging time in the sense that all the macroeconomic indices seems to not to be working for now. And it's not unconnected with some of the hard decisions that the government has to take at this point in time. Because you will bear with me that uh, for quite some times, even at the global level, mm -hmm. things have not been going smoothly. And because of that, you know, the government has to take some initiatives. But one thing is that uh, we are believing that some of these initiatives if we, are, if we are able to address some two fundamental issues, the issue of corruption, the issues of uh, uh, misuse of funds, misapplication and misappropriation of funds, then we might be able to stabilize the economy and growth will start evolving. But in the meantime, we have to pay a price because there was a time when this money was flowing very well, when the economy was moving very well, all of a sudden, because of uh, uh, bad management, things nose dive. And that is the price we have to pay. So, and uh, that's exactly what is happening to our fuel. Because the issue of fuel cannot be resolved until the day we are able to have our own refinery working. But in as much as we continue to import mm -hmm. and we continue, we, we have to pay, you know, uh, uh, additional costs, cost of transportation, cost of delivery, cost of haulage, and everything. You know, things are going to be very hard. And you know that the one thing with the fuel price is that it's a major determinant and the price of other services within the ecosystem. So anything that affects that price always have a ripple effect on the other part of the economy. But I believe that with time and with the hope that uh, Dangote uh, refinery will soon, be, will soon come on stream, we believe that maybe that will be able to alleviate the problem and uh, if properly managed. But would that alleviate yeah. or address the problem? That enough? Will it be? Will it be enough to address the no, problem? No, it's not. It, like, like I did mention, the, the, the fundamental problem we have in this nation today is that of corruption. We need to nip our corruption in the... We need to do something substantial so that people will not be going away with wastages mm -hmm. and misuse of funds. And uh, secondly, there is need to diversify, mm -hmm. you know, our foreign, you know, foreign exchange uh, uh, sources of funds. Because we can't be depending on the source, and the source is having challenges. If the source is having challenges, it means that your main source of income will be having challenges. But are we of the opinion that if this is diversified and we have some other sources that is helping that major sources, then things will improve. And to, to worsen the situation, now even the main source of revenue again is having serious problems by things like oil theft, pollution, and some other things that is happening to that system. Now, so now, now the banking sector plays a crucial role in managing inflation. Uh, what strategies can banks employ to support businesses yeah, and individuals yeah. affected by the price increase? Our belief in the banking system is that is, we have always been fortunate in this direction, that uh, for every economy to, uh, to grow, the fact still remains that uh, is based on the fact that how you know, financial intermediation process is taking place. And you will bear with me that banks are the person who are in a position to make sure that there is a nexus, a connection between the deficit unit and the surplus unit. Mm -hmm. And that we have been done through advocacy. And for example, our conference will be coming up uh, tomorrow in Abuja. And when you look at the theme of that conference, as now, a now before we, we actually touch on that, because yes. I'm going to ask you a question on that yeah. particularly. Yeah. Can, can, can we so how, the, the, the very best way to address inflation is to create value 
value for everything you set up. And as far as banking is, is, is concerned, we have been creating value over the years, and we continue to do that. And like I said, bank, we must recollect that it doesn't operate in isolation. Mm -hmm. If, for example, a loan is ours to create credit and give out to the deficit units, if the deficit units, because of the bank economic policies, are finding it difficult to repay the fund, remember that it is only when the fund is refunded that we can create further credit. Okay. So on our own, we have been trying all we could to make sure that the system works. And over the years, you will realize that the, the, the level of the development that we have seen in the economy today is not connected with the pivotal role that bank had already paid, played in the past. You look at a lot of, you know, the issue of uh, 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 payment system being put in place within and outside the country. You look at the standard, you know, I mean, training competence being built within the system. This, uh, there are so many, more. and look at some of our major transactions, infrastructures we have in this country. In one way or the other, you see banks playing a pivotal role in them. Even the Dangote, uh, the fine we are talking about, mm -hmm. you know, most of these funds were sourced from uh, Okay, uh, you, you, you have converged on Abuja to talk about uh, accelerated and economic uh, growth. Uh, what is the way to go? The way to go, like I said, we, we know the current state. That's why we say the, the, we, know, we know the current state. But our belief is that do we continue to talk without taking a step of a, 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 a positive step? And that's why we are saying the way to go is very simple. We have identified four key areas. Mm -hmm. One of the things that is affecting this economy today is, the, is one of the things that is going to come as a sub team. The issue of JAPA and JAPADA, you know, that we want to see, the, the, we want to uh, educate the people about this issue and how people can, how we can use that phenomenon to even be beneficial to the economy. And we have said last year, we conducted the research, and we did mention that there is no way you can prevent somebody from traveling from one place to the other. To, for his own career development, or to build more competence, and for even education, because traveling is part of education. But the fact still remains that if these people that these people are living, do we have a substitute? And the bankers have sat down together. We have decided to build, you know, a, a, a human retention capital, which has been donated by most of the banks contributed immensely to this. And we want to build a state of the art academy mm -hmm. where people can easily be trained and replace those people that are going. Then it becomes a win-win situation. Win-win in the sense that those people travel abroad because of their affinity to home. You know, some of them will bring all this diaspora, uh, diaspora uh, money into the system. Those people that are here too, we make them more employable and they will go into the system. So to me, it's a win-win. And this is one of the things we also want to discuss about in this uh, something. When we are looking at the need, like I did mention, the second main sub team is the issue of demystif you know, this, um, uh, the, um, we, are, we, are, we are trying to make sure that we diversify rather, you know, the foreign exchange sources. The sources has always been monolithic. We want to make sure that we have diverse sources. When these diverse are caused, it will be able to augment the oil source. Then we are saying unlocking, there is need for all, un, un, uh, uh, try to unlock new possibilities in the area of AI and innovation, which is very critical, not only to the banking industry, but to the, the, the entire uh, ecosystem. And lastly, we say there is need for us to reposition you know, our financial system so that this, it can hit social economic development within the nation. And that is why we, you will find out that uh, when the issue of recapitalization was raised, we supported it. We believe that that will put our banks in a very vantage position in being able to you know, finance large transactions that will be able to help us and take care of our infrastructural inadequacies that is all over the place. Bad roads, no good network, no mm. power supply, and things like that. We believe even these banks are there. These are the things that can aid you know, development. And okay. we are being intentional about this in this conference. Okay, okay, just br briefly before I let you go, because uh, we still have uh, Baba Tunde to uh, accommodate. Uh, uh, how do you think, where is the role of bank in achieving the uh, federal, gov uh, federal government's uh, $1 trillion targeted economy or GDP? I just think briefly. it's very basic. Like I did mention, mm. the primary duty of any bank is to serve, is, is predicated on the principle of financial intermediation trying to mobilize deposit from all the surplus sources mm. and making sure that this money is used judiciously toward the deficit units. That is what brings about, you know, development. And experience has taught us, even research has confirmed, that the velocity at which money moves from one person's hand to the other within the system, hey, development. If you give me very good salary and I have money to invest, I buy land or I buy something, it will promote the sales of whatever I'm buying. Mm. So you find out it's a chain, there is a, you know, value chain that is happening within the, within the system. And the only link 
that makes this to be possible are banks. And that's why we have been supporting the government in the area of financial inclusion. So that those people in the rural areas, in the suburbs area, will also be you know, involved in what is going on at the federal level. And we believe that if this is sustained you know, for a very long time and is being supported by um, all those infrastructures, things we, the economy will improve and all of us will be better for it. And that is why I did mention the other time that we are in very much support of re recapitalization okay. because that will bring in more funds into the system okay. and we'll be able to create and finance large transactions. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Professor Pius Daisy or Larry Wadju. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Thank now, you for having me.